Hey, this is Russ. Hey, is your bike truly class two or class three? <laughs> yeah, take a look at your bike. Find out if it really is. You know, a lot of bikes come uh, set up as a class two bike. Let, let's talk about classes real quickly. <laughs> class one bikes. All right, class one bikes is where you have um, a motor assist, okay, where you're pedaling. Helps you up to 20 miles per hour. The motor will help you up to 20 miles per hour. Won't help you any further than that. And it has no throttle. That's class one, okay? Class two bikes, what we see a lot of bikes at, is uh, the motor will help you up to 20 miles per hour if you pedal. And it also has a throttle that'll help you up to 20 miles per hour. Now, that doesn't mean your bike can't go past 20 miles an hour. It's just that uh, the motor won't help you past 20 miles per hour, okay? So if you pedal real hard on your own, yeah, you might go faster, okay? Then there's class three. Class three is kind of like class two, but if you keep pedaling hard, that motor will help you up to 28 miles per hour. However, the throttle will only help you up to 20 miles per hour, all right? So now people look at this and they go, well, my, my bike came in as class two, but I modified it in the menu of the bike. Now it's tw uh, 28 miles per hour is class three. Yeah, really? <laughs> is it true class three? Here's why I'm saying this, okay? Because many bikes, if you modify that menu, you put it to the 28 mile per hour setting, sometimes the throttle goes up to 28 miles per hour too. So technically that's no longer class three, all right? That's a, uh, a pseudo class three. Yeah, just by name, people think it's class three, but it really, really isn't because if the throttle will help you to 28 miles per hour, it's not truly class three, yeah. So what is it? <laughs> Is it an illegal bike now at this point? Yeah, I, you know, I started thinking about this because, you know, the last video we were talking about, you know, you know, regulations and whether that was going to affect us and the like. Um, yeah, if you modify your bike, if you go into the menu and you move that thing to 28 and the throttle goes to 28, you're no longer class three. Yeah, if, if the throttle doesn't go to 28, and you pedal and goes to 28, that's class three, okay? Now, I have a bike like that. That's the electric bike company Model S that I have. Yeah, that one, I've, I've uh, changed it from the class two that came in that way. I moved it to true class three. Now, the minute 20 miles per hour happens, the throttle doesn't help anymore, all right? But I can pedal that thing to 28, and a motor will help me. That's a true class three bike. But, uh, you know, some of my other bikes, like the Magicycle, for instance, you know, that will pedal and throttle the 28. So technically speaking, that's not true class three, right? Now, the thing is, is who's going to really know this? I mean, unless, unless the officer who stops you gets on the bike <laughs> and he throttles that thing up himself and sees that that thing goes at 28 miles per hour. I mean, how's he going to know, right? Or unless, they, unless they ask you to do certain things to see if, if they can kind of determine whether it's actually, you know, helping it to 28 or not. I guess they, I guess they could, uh, you know, lift up the rear tire, hit the throttle and see where it goes. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's not under load. You could always claim, well, you know, that thing's going that way, but, you know, you add my weight, it only does 20. How does he know? He'd have to get on that bike and check it himself. I, I don't think they're going to do that, all right? So the, the point is this. Um, if bike manufacturers give us throttles that'll go to 28, they're kind of skating the law, right? Yeah, they are. And if you do it, you're kind of skating the law too. <laughs> now, most of my bikes, I took a look at my bikes today. I just kind of looked them over. I says, how many of these, these bikes have I moved it to the 28 mile per hour range? Pretty much all of them. <laughs> I, I, I took it, if the, if the option was there to, to, to give it a little bit more oomph, yeah, I, I modified it. So, but again, uh, I actually prefer bikes that will throttle the 28. There's times that I kind of need that 28 miles per hour. Now you might think, when would you need that? Well, as you know, I ride on the street a lot, more so than on the bike paths, really. And so sometimes I'm competing with the cars. I'm moving pretty fast uh, because, you know, if you're really slow, cars kind of like, oh, you know, this guy's in our way and everything. If you're moving at 28 miles per hour on a 35 mile an hour zone, they don't feel so bad. Okay. They feel, okay, this guy's moving. It's fine. But if you're crawling at like 12 miles an hour and you're on the street and they're doing 35, yeah, you kind of feel like, wow, I'm really way behind here. And, and I kind of feel it's more dangerous, actually. That's just, just me. Okay. You might not think that way, but that's, that's me. 
So others have said, why don't you get bikes that go faster than 28? Well, I don't even feel comfortable with 28. <laughs> I mean, I'm moving. Um, I'm, I'm glad I'm able to do it when I have to do it. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't feel that comfortable. And I know that too, if, if I were to bite the bullet, if I were to get into a, some type of crash, uh, it's going to hurt a lot more if I'm doing like 35. <laughs> All right. So the faster you go, the worse it's going to be for you if you take a crash. You know, you have to kind of remember, too, there's there's hazards on the road. You know, you got potholes, you got things that, you know, are on the road that maybe you didn't see until the last minute you hit that. You know, so you take a you take a gamble when you go down and some of the spills can be very, very bad. So uh, always wear your helmet. But, you know, a lot of people don't talk about other things. You know, if you fall and you scrape your knee or you fall and you hurt your elbow or whatever or your wrist or whatever, whatever stops your fall, it's going to be some major road rash. OK, now I have not seen anyone, uh, at least in my area, you know, ride with uh, knee pads, elbow pads, wrist guards. I have not seen anyone ride that way with a bike, with an e-bike or a regular bike. But if you think about it, uh, that is probably the safest way to do it. Right. Now, maybe you think about even people who ride motorcycles, you know, take a look at their helmets. Now, take, then take a look at yours. All right. There's a big difference. But again, they're moving quickly. Uh, if they fall at 60 miles an hour, they need some major protection. Right. But still, I think you, you got to have to look look out for yourself. I mean, uh, as you know, I, I ride with the X needle helmet. And by the way, they did do a, a price uh, drop on the X needle helmets. So I don't I don't know what did they go down to 135. Maybe less. I'm not sure. But uh, it's in the description of my videos. I updated my videos. OK, you still get a discount if you use the affiliate link there. You still get a discount there. So um, I ride with the X needle helmet because I know that thing's rated to 28 miles per hour. OK, so if I go down, at least my head is semi protected better than a, a bike helmet that's only in like, you know, a basic bike helmet. You want something something good. You don't want something that's. Uh, yeah, not so good, you know, but that only protects your head. I mean, what about the other parts if you fall? Yeah, it, it becomes a problem. I, um, I've only fallen three times, and I've mentioned before, the thir only, <laughs> so far. <laughs> uh, I've fallen three times, but again, two of the times, the first two times, uh, it was only because I had a weakened uh, left leg and weakened knee. And so when I stopped at the stop signs, um, you know, the bike leans to one side. It leaned toward the left side, which is where I had the knee replacement. And so I didn't have the leg strength at the time. And I went down. Okay, and the third time, my, my shoelace got caught on the, on the pedals. So I purposely took the fall. Okay, it was on my right leg, uh, my right foot. And, and so I could have just leaned to the left, but, you know, I fell twice on the left. <laughs> so I says, forget it. I'm not risking my knee again. Uh, with the replaced knees, so I purposely fell to the right. Okay, now each time of those falls, um, it had nothing to do with my ability or inability to ride a bike. It had the problem was basically um, I didn't have the physical strength to hold the bike up plus myself on that weakened leg. So here, here's what I'm going to say: if if you if you have a hip replacement, you have a knee replacement, or something physically that um, you're not strong enough. Okay. Be prepared that, you know, what, when the bike stops, you have to kind of lean the bike one way or the other if, 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 you, if you can't straddle the bike. Like, you know, I had a, uh, I think at that time I had the Rad Rover 5, and that's a step over bike. So, you know, it, it's pretty tall. And so, um, you know, you, you tend to kind of lean it to one side a little bit so you don't hit the areas that guys don't want to be hit at. <laughs> so, I, so I leaned to the left, which was a bad mistake. You know, I didn't have the leg strength. You know, the one time I fell too, I, was, I fell once at Costco. Uh, this was while I was going through rehab of my knee for knee replacement. I, I took my own mobility scooter, which I usually put in the trunk of my car. And uh, so I took that with me to Costco because, you know, the Costco mobility scooters, you know how slow those things are? They're barely moving, right? Well, mine moves pretty fast. It moves faster than you can walk. So I took my scooter. So then I was reloading it back into the car in the trunk. And um, as I'm lifting the parts, because it comes apart, comes in sections. So I'm lifting the parts into the car. Uh, again, weakened leg. I, I couldn't hold myself and the scooter up. And so down I went. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if people around you watching you, you know, nobody came to help. Yeah. People tend to avoid you when they see something happen to you. They don't want to get involved. Uh, eventually, a Costco, um, Costco, um, uh, uh, what would I say, team member <laughs> came running over to help me. And my wife was there, so she helped me. 
But uh, yeah, it's, it's surprising how people don't help others sometimes because they, they don't want to get involved, you know. Terrible. Anyway, same thing. You know, uh, when you have a weakened uh, body part, like your leg or something, you, you could go down. So it's not like I didn't know how to ride a mobility scooter. <laughs> I was just putting it in my trunk. So my whole point is this. If you have uh, parts of your body that's not as strong and you're riding an e-bike, be careful. Okay. It's not really that you can't ride the bike. It may be the same situation like me. Your weakened state makes it difficult for you to hold up the bike and hold yourself up and you might go down so be careful is all i'm saying okay you should always be careful anyways when you're riding your bike but going back to our topic all right if your class of bike is rated for class two and you modify to what you think is class three check to see if it truly is class three all right now here's the question for today do you really care <laughs> Do you, I mean, do you really care if you, if you want that 28 miles per hour with the motor helping you, do you really care if your throttle does it as well? I mean, do you want your throttle to go to 28? I do personally. Uh, or do you want to stay by the letter of the law and say, you know, if my bike goes to 28 and so does the throttle as well as the pedaling, then I'm not going to modify it. Let me know if you do that. Okay. I have a gut feeling. Many of you will say that, um, I don't really care. <laughs> I want my 28. I don't care how I get it. Right. But maybe you have a difference of opinion. Maybe you say, I have to be to the letter of the law. Like I said, the, the electric company um, bike that I have, the, uh, I'm not talking electric, okay? Not L-E-C-T-R-I-C. -C. I'm talking electric bike company. That's two different companies. <laughs> People seem to get confused, okay? No, this is the electric bike company. That's the name of the company, electric bike company, EBC for short, okay? Um, their bike is a true class three when you modify to class three it will not throttle to 28 but it will help you if you pedal to 28 all right that is a true class three bike uh i've always said if you want a bike to the letter of the law get an electric bike company bike because it will do that okay anyways that's the topic for today i just wanted to find out what your opinion was based on this whole class three business or whether it's true like, truly class three or whether you really care i mean if you don't care put that down all right i want to see how many people really don't care i personally don't care i i prefer to have the throttle go to 28 but i know that that skates the law all right anyways if you like this video go ahead and hit the like button hit the subscribe button i'll talk to you guys next time